Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of the Lakes. Our celebrant today is our pastor, Father Jerry Harris. We now begin the liturgy of the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is number 426, Canticle of the Sun. The heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field. And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the wind that blows through the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze, they blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Good morning, Good morning. and welcome to our guests as well as our members. And we got special guests. We got Audrey and Carl Peterson celebrating 70 years of marriage. Where are you? Where are you? Okay, there they are. Just so you know, I was a year old when you got married. So, <laughs> so there. It was a good year. So let's begin as always, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's peace be with you all. And as we gather, let's just remind ourselves of a merciful God. You are the God of all time, Lord have mercy. You're the God born in time, Christ have mercy. You are the God that gives us time to show us the way to eternal life, Lord have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's praise God with the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives, reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's hear our scriptures. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, if only you would heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us that we may carry it out. Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out. No, it is something very near to you already in your mouth and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O oh God. In your greatness, kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O oh Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O oh God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. See you, lowly ones, 
comes and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurs not. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. The descendants of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall inhabit it. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the church, of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he, and he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, 
but saw, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to that place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over the wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a story of a young woman who left her farm in Ohio and moved to the city of Cleveland to take a job as an administrative assistant. And she was incredibly lonely in that new big city all by herself. And one night she was in a small restaurant eating by herself, and there was very few people in the restaurant. She was dawdling with her food, and all of a sudden a middle-aged woman came in and saw the young woman and asked if she could join her as she had her meal. And the young woman gladly said yes. And pretty soon the middle-aged lady, she picked up on what was going on, and what happened is they, she bantered back and forth a little bit. And she had some wit about her, and all of a sudden the young woman uh, started to smile, and the smile turned to tears because of the pain of the being homesick. And so what happened is a woman talked to her for a long time and walked her back to the hotel that she was staying. And she made a point for the next two weeks to make daily contact with this young woman until that phase of her adjustment Past. See, she understood what it was to take care of somebody on the side of the road. She was truly a Samaritan. In the gospel today, we've heard this story for us that are older, the good Samaritan, over and over and over again. We hear it at least once a year in the cycle of readings. What's happening is, is that the uh, Samaritan are Jewish people, but they had intermarried with some of the people in exile. And so the worship they had, the Jewish worship, all of a sudden was watered down in the eyes of other Jewish people. So he had one group of Jews, didn't like the other group of, of, of Jews. And so that was the whole tiff. And so when somebody was reading this, it was, uh, or hearing this, that would have been pretty shocking that a Samaritan did something actually good. So the point is, is that, do you ever get beat up, feel like you're on the side of the road? Maybe it's because of life circumstances. Maybe it's because of divorce, could be illness, whatever. You know, like when you're going down the road and somebody is broken down by the side of the road, and you stop to help them, is the first words out of your mouth, what religion are you? <laughs> no, you say, can I help you? Whatever religion they have or don't have doesn't matter. The point is, is that it's one human being showing compassionate to another people, another person. So basically what happens, it's not rocket scientists. All of a sudden, in that first reading, Moses talks about the law that God has given us, basically to take care of one another, to take care of your parents. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't disgrace your spouse. It was not enumerated today, but that was the law that he was referring to. And what happens is all of us, we've got to make sure that we, uh, when somebody is a good Samaritan, we don't judge them by their outward words or the way they look. 
I remember uh, a lady by the name of Lena. Lena was a crotchety old lady. I can say that because she's dead. <laughs> but she was a Samaritan. And it was only after her death that people realized it. What happened with Lena is she got mad at the priest in the town where I was serving at the time with another priest. And what happened is, so she walked five miles out in the country to another small little parish. And uh, she did that. She rarely accepted rides uh, back and forth to the town. But what happened is people always thought she was incredibly wealthy. The church needed some new carpeting, so she paid for that. The church needed a new organ, she paid for that. And what happened is after her death, people understood that she was actually dirt poor. She died basically in a one-room hotel. You know how hotels go through the food chain of, uh, uh, they, they get older, they, other populations go th th into them. Many times it's homeless people or certainly people that don't have a lot of income. Well, that was the situation for this particular hotel. It was clean and neat. But it happened in that hotel that Lena was neighbor to all the other people in the, in the hotel. And she made sure that they got what they need. She didn't always do it with a smile, but you could tell that she, she really cared. So Lena was the good Samaritan. And sometimes the rough exterior, exterior of a person can be off-putting for that. The big thing about, we hear about a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now we just say, well, that's, that's a journey. I've been from Jericho, excuse me, from Jerusalem down to Jericho. I didn't walk down there. We took an air-conditioned bus because I was on a tour over there. That is one desolate place, and you better not be traveling by yourself. Back in the day of Jesus, people always traveled together because there was literally safety in numbers. And the other thing about from, Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho is you're traveling from Jer Jerusalem where God dwelled to Jericho, which is known as Sin City. So if you're going downhill, it's symbolic of your life going away from God and towards sin. And so that was kind of the, the situation. And so what happens is, is that the image for us is, is that we have to be, make sure that we are staying closer to Jerusalem, to God, than we are to Jericho, symbolically speaking. A rabbi tells a story of a poor villager that had come to town to earn some money so that he could have supplies for Passover. Now, Passover is one of the central feasts for our Jewish brothers and sisters. Passover is where we get our Eucharist as Christians. And what happened is this man got the money together, got the supplies, was on his way back with his cart and his horse, and what happened is he got stuck and tipped over in a creek that was mired down with water and mud. And he was down there, and uh, he was crying out for help. And all of a sudden, a rich man came along with his uh, cart and horse and servants. And so he heard the cries, and he stopped, and he helped. And what happened is, is that he had his servants make sure the cart got uprighted, all the supplies got put back on, and he hooked the cart behind his own cart and brought it to the village where this, young, where this man lived with his family. And when he got there, he realized that this family and this village was dirt poor. So he left a large sum of money for, the, for that particular village. Fast forward, this rich man dies and he's before the judgment seat in heaven. And as the judgment was gonna be called out, because he was known for being a ruthless man, all of a sudden the angel of mercy called for the scales of justice. And what you would do is put on 
what that person did in life, and if it weighed enough, he would be allowed into heaven. And so what happened is, is that they started putting the stuff on the scales. They put the stuff about how he helped the, uh, the, the man get out of the ditch, how he got him to the village and all the money. But it was not enough until they placed upon the scales the fact that the rich man actually got down in the mud and helped the guy out. So they pulled all the muck and whatever on the scales, and that was enough to push the scales so that he was able to get into heaven. So the point for us is that all we need to do is to do something. And when we do that, that is enough. If we are beat up on the side of the road, I pray that somebody will be there for you. And if you are that person that's beat up, we need to look out for you and reach out the best you can. Everybody says, well, I'm not going to do it perfect. Well, I've been doing this 43 years, and I'm not doing it perfect. I just do what I can and let the Lord bless it. And now we have... Audrey and Carl, why don't you come on down for a little blessing? And all the ki- the five kids are here too. Raise your hand with the grandkids and whatever else you got. That's that whole section. Hi, right, just stand right here. How about that? Where'd you get married? Where? Where did you get married? In uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Okay. Very good. Well, Audrey and Carl. You've come today with your family to celebrate 70 years of marriage. You've journeyed together a long time. The way has not always been easy, but because you've been faithful to each other and faithful to God, God has been faithful to you, blessed you abundantly with your gift of marriage and your children and grandchildren. This is truly a joyful, joyful day. So, Carl, do you reaffirm your marriage vows when you took Audrey for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and health, till death do you part? If so, answer, I do. I do. And, Audrey, do you reaffirm your, reaffirm your marriage vows when you took Carl for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? If so, answer, I do. You do. So let's all extend our right hand in blessing towards them. Heavenly Father... We just look with blessing on this couple who have renewed 70 years of married. We just ask your continued blessing upon them that they may continue to journey and one day, one day enjoy the blessings of heaven. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may kiss the bride as they say so. You're welcome. Okay, very good. They're going to splurge big time today. They're going to the pancake breakfast put on by Casey's afterwards. It's a good deal. Okay, let's rise for our profession of faith. Now, every time we come, we uh, profess who we are. Sometimes we just kind of let the mouth go on glide. Maybe today we just look at the words or think about the words as we pray them. And together we pray, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, <clears throat> with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> and so our God is merciful. Let us now turn to the Lord and ask for what we need this day. For the church, that through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, she may weather difficult times with holiness and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that through the mercy of God, all may come to know the gospel message and the ways of righteousness and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hunger, may the Lord fill their every physical and spiritual need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who worship and share community here, may the Holy Spirit continue to enkindle in us the fire of his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Kathy Berg, for whom this Mass is offered, may the saints and angels soon welcome them to the fullness of God's love in the perfection of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hear the needs we speak aloud. We hear the needs of our hearts. We pray for peace in this troubled world, especially Ukraine. We pray for peace in our streets, for an end to violence, that people will talk to one another. We pray for a respect for all human life from conception to natural death. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated now as our ties are gathered and the altar is prepared. For young people, we have a kid's collection. If you want to bring your offering and put it in the basket or buy the flowers up here, that would be a good thing. Our offertory hymn is number 483. Christians, let us love one another. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood we are fed. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life. God is love. We who break this bread are one body. We who share this cup all are one. Children of our Father in heaven, we are heirs with God's only Son. Everyone who loves is born of God. <clears throat> Jesus is our life, God is love. Pray that our gifts of bread and wine, our tithes and offerings be acceptable to our God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for our the Lord of for our Lord, look upon the offerings of the church as she makes her prayer to you. 
and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. This we pray through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty, salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal Father. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with angels, we celebrate and praise in a joyful celebration as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread through this world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and now baptized believers. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her holy spouse, St. Joseph, with blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Jesus taught 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day, that may we always do your will, and we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 605, Your Words Are Spirit and Life. Everlasting 
God's precepts keep us, their purpose is right. They gladden the hearts of people. God's command is so clear, it brings us new vision, bringing God's light to our eyes. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, life everlasting. Living by God's truth is holy and sure, God's presence is everlasting. God's truth is eternal, bringing us justice, bringing God's justice to earth. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's word is precious, desired more than gold, worth more than we dare imagine, and sweeter than honey, this word will feed us, bringing fulfillment and joy. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, having consumed these gifts, we pray that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Knights of Columbus is having a pancake breakfast in the back. You're welcome to be a part of that. And uh, also there's some raffles going on. And so we've uh, been fed at God's word and God's table. Now let's prepare to do God's work. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be Our closing hymn is number 739, Lead Me, Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God 
God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. Lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth. To seek and to find the narrow way. Be my way, be my truth. Be my life, my Lord, and lead me, Lord, today. Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be theirs, and the pure in heart shall see their God. Blessed are they whose hunger only holiness can fill. For I say they shall be satisfied. Lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth. To seek and to find the narrow way. Be my way, be my truth, be my life, my Lord.